welcome to Stone today, where we discuss uh, East Africa regional integration, opportunities and challenges for citizen participation. As you've already been told, we still expect to be joined by Honorable Shemba again in the Minister for East African Affairs, uh, who's a keynote speaker. But as a way for him to arrive, I'd like to invite uh, Professor uh, Dr. Mambusi and Devesen uh, from a career come and speak to us. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, this was a very big challenge to me <laughs> because uh, essentially I thought I was uh, a discussant, not uh, the presenter for the day, but nevertheless, uh, it would still provoke a debate because here, where it is discussion and exchange of ideas rather than uh, having a comprehensive presentations. Um, as you realize, our topic for today is uh, East African integration, opportunities and, the, and the challenges, and uh, the issue of East African community has not been given the due attention, in my opinion, as it has been. We are talking about participation, citizens' <coughs> participation. But to begin with, Let's not be participated because it is possible to think that you are participating when actually you are being participated. And two, there is also a difference between the citizen and the subject. Uh, a citizen can be somebody who belongs to a certain territorial unit, but it could also mean uh, somebody who understands his or her rights and participates in shaping public affairs that affect him or herself. That is the concept of a citizen. So do we have citizens or do we have subjects? Are we going to participate or are we being participated? Having said that, I want to also to point out from the beginning that the East African community affairs, participation in East African community affairs is still largely lacking. There is still a huge social distance, political distance, between citizens in the respective countries, part of the countries, and Arusha. I am using Arusha here to mean East African community. Because if I may raise a question here as to, for example, how many of us here know the Secretary General, the UN Secretary General? I want to imagine almost all of us here are uh, no. But if I pose the question as who is the Secretary General of this African community, you may find by the number of people here do not know. And yet Dr. Sinspera was not only a graduate of Chisumi, he was also of Makere University Medical School. But we are more connected to the UN than we are connected to Arusha. These are some indicators that there is, a, there is little participation by East African citizens. Secondly, there is no emotional, political, and other bonds and connections between Arusha and the various citizens in the East African community. And therefore, uh, by the way, I, I am the chairman of the East Africa Forum, which is a, a think tank now uh, aiming at creating East Africanness. Is there a, a, a spirit of East Africanness if we were to ask ourselves? Uh, do we have some emotional bonds with Arusha? Have we done away with mental borders? Because before you think of creating an East African community, a community in its true sense of the world, you must have your mental attitudes open down. So for us in our institution in Africa, we are actually aiming at that. That is creating synergies such that we remove mental borders, but the mental borders are, very, are still very strong. And so far, the East African community integration process has been created by the governments, the various heads of state and governments. There is some participation by 
my resistance, but I think it is still minimal. Because the relationship between Arusha and various capitals is still at the state level. And even at that, it is still concerned with, it is still largely an affair between the executive. If you are to ask in the region, even here in Uganda, how many people are concerned about the the, the sense of honorable zero. You would be shocked even here in Kampala people are not concerned. I don't, I don't even see it being discussed uh, fairly as it should be in the meeting. That shows you the distance that is still there. Nevertheless, when we talk about opportunities, let me give some few remarks about opportunities. Yes, there is a legal framework. There is a legal framework that provides for systems to participate in the East African community affairs. The treaty provides for it, and the protocols also provide for that opportunity. So the legal framework has provided for that, although there are still observers. The Business Council still has observer status. I think the East African is for such or whatever. Also, has it been granted even the observer centers? I doubt that. Then the, 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 law, the, the lawyers also have got an observer centers. You, 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 observe, you, you observe that one observer centers. But nevertheless, there is that legal framework that has been provided. But the legal framework is still at that representational level. The citizens have no connections direct connections with their representatives. They are not even East African legislative assembly representatives who are not elected by the citizens but by, by parliament. So the legal framework is there but it is not as effective as it should be. Two, there is institutional framework. As I've just pointed out, there are institutions like the business council or the business Luxor for the civil society organizations and the one for the lawyers for the law society. I think there is an offering for the trade unions and others to participate. So there is a, some institutional framework in place to allow citizens to participate at that representation level, not popular level. We need to move from, or we need to, to move beyond, not move from, we need to move. To, move beyond representational participation to popular participation, which is not yet in place. And that explains why the connections between the, the, the citizens and Arusha are still very long. About the Secretary General of the East African Community, do, do we know that he, the, how many of us know that November 30th is supposed to be East African Day? How many calendars in Uganda, if any, have got that day? as East African Day, which is supposed to be celebrated, which is supposed to be commemorated, I think which has been proposed to be a public holiday in East Africa. In East Africa. You see, there is still that lack of that bond. So there are opportunities at the institutional level and legal level, the legal framework and the institutional framework. There is still a problem in what I may call uh, ideological level or the normative framework. The normative framework for participation. Do people have the norms? Do they feel strongly a sense of East Africanness to participate? Because participation should not be only at the formal level. It could also take place at the informal level. Actually, this is the most important. Do we have connections and networks between the various political parties in Uganda? and Kenya and Tanzania and Rwanda and Burundi? Do we have political parties that share common ideologies, like you find in the EU, where you find social democrats in Germany, social democrats in Britain, in Poland, in France, and the rest? Do we have that network at the ideological level? I am afraid it's not there. Do we have other networks, social networks like the musicians, do they have an East African forum through which they can participate? By the way, musicians could do, do better in integrating than even at the political level. 
When I have ever been in Dar es Salaam and I'm at Ubungo Park, you just hear chameleon's music blaring very high in the in the Daradaras at Ubungo Park, which creates more integration. But then it is not formalized. It is not recognized that musicians, religious groups, can also form this African community. The, 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 the poets, the academicians, the, the singers, the cultural associations. In other words, to create a social integration rather than just remaining only at the political level. Because when it remains at that level, it remains just a political expression or a geographic expression. When you talk about, for example, Europe, you are not talking about a mere geographic expression as Europe. You will find a society that is integrated in terms of norms in terms of ideologies, in terms of social interaction, which I think is lacking in spite of the presence of the legal framework and the institutional framework in place. So we need to address the mental borders at the normative level, and that is what Vision East Africa, as I think done, is actually trying to achieve, to see how the various ideological positions can network, can uh, connect with each other, the value systems, we lack value systems in this African community, uh, in this African community. Do we share certain value systems with people in Tanzania, in Kenya, in Burundi, and Rwanda? Later on, even in Uganda, do we have common value systems? If we don't, then the East African community will only remain on the paper. And citizens need only, need not only participate only at the trade level, which has been emphasized. It has been a trade-centered East African integration. But trade-centered integration is necessary, but it is not uh, sufficient to create East African integration. We need integration at the political level, at the trade level, at the social level, at the cultural level, at community level. That is, the, 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 the citizens of East African community should endeavor to integrate and that is where the participation will be effective rather than this one which might turn out to be to, 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 to be citizens being participated rather than participating in the East African integration community. Three, I wanted to point out that there are assumptions in the treaty that East African community <coughs> is a private sector led Mr. Kasita here will tell us about a private sector led. That's an assumption. Because you cannot have an intergovernment organization led by the private sector. How? How does it happen? Private sector led, when the African community is an intergovernmental organization, it is also supposed to be people centered, assumed. How is it people centered when even the leaders they quarrel today? The following day, you may have the, 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 the community collapsing. Uh, the other day, we heard that there is a, a disagreement between President Chikwete and President Kagame. And the East African community nearly collapsed towards the end of last year, just because of the disagreement of two people. Now they have created some outfit called the Kao, the Coalition of the Weary. But how many of us have participated? in that coalition of the winning, where is it living uh, Burundi and, uh, and, and, and Tanzania? Have we participated in harmonizing the various legal systems? Have we participated in integrating the, uh, the, the, the policies at that level to be able citizens participate in discussing the policies in the region? Because when you go to Tanzania, you find that is state-owned. In Uganda it, and Kenya, it is private-owned. And this might bring uh, challenges to the region. Are we sure that we have brought everybody on board? For example, we have a history of uh, the Kingdom of Uganda not comfortable with being integrated in the East African community. The other day we were here in this forum discussing the Buganda question. Would the Buganda somehow feel that once they go into this structure of the East African community, they are going to lose their identity? Have they been approached to see how they, they look at it? What about the people of Zanzibar who want to be integrated into East African community as an independent country? 
What about the resources that we have discovered? Have people brought them on board to be discussed? What countries like Uganda say, since we have discovered oil, let's first enjoy oil resources before we integrate. Or Tanzania says, let's first enjoy our gas resources before we integrate. Are these things now on the uh, in the public sphere? Are they being discussed by the media? What about in educational institutions? What about civil society organizations? What about political parties? Could I ask whether there is anybody in Uganda who would lose elections just because he is for this in this African community? Because in Europe, a member of parliament can lose a seat because of his position with EU. But in Uganda, you can't even lose a bottle of mineral water because you have a position on the African community. How many political parties have got a provision in Uganda or Kenya or Tanzania to do with the African community? At least I think the NRM has, and maybe CCM, but others are not concerned. The other day we were in Arusha discussing these issues with our colleagues from Tanzania, and they are the ones actually who almost literally have forced the debate of East African community into the constitutional making process there beyond Zanzibar versus Tanganyika. So you find that political parties as vehicles of aggregating ideas and the values from the community are not focused on issues of East African integration. So finally, Mr. Chairman, I would like to say that although there are opportunities in respect of the legal framework and institutional framework and organizational framework, there has not been much attention focused on this whole issue of East African integration. And yet, East African community is so central that now decisions of policy are no longer concentrating in Kampala, but in Arusha. They are no longer concentrated in Nairobi, but Arusha. And yet, the connection with Arusha is still minimal. So, I would like to, to congratulate Accord and other organizations that are bringing out this issue so that we discuss this whole notion of East African integration, so that it is not left only to our leaders who just sometimes meet and because they have some differences of opinion over security or whatever matter, then the East African community becomes a decline, the, 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 the process is stored or it is facilitated without having everybody on board, more so without having citizens involved in this whole issue of integration. I thank you very much. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, as we wait for the uh, main speaker, let's have Mr. Issa Sashi, the spokesman for the, the city. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Issa Sechito, commonly referred to as Kaseta. Yeah. The East African integration, opportunities and challenges as discussed by Professor Yevesa, uh, I really thought I would also be favored <coughs> somebody was helping me to discuss the opportunities at a wider spectrum so that I can give the practical version of how we find it as a business community. And nevertheless, the professor has talked about how the opportunity has been given to the civil society, the business council, and lawyers in that category, and observer status is under which they serve. I was recently in, uh, in Nairobi where we are discussing the challenges of the East African integration and the civil society, the legal people and the business council we are all lamenting that what they are nurturing is observer status and therefore when you talk about the legal framework are having an opportunity to get engaged in the East African community issues. If a trader or a business person, for that matter, is affected, how is the repeal mechanism? How can you get justice 
if you have your goods held either at the port of Mombasa or Dar es Salaam, can you show directly and whom do you show and where is the case going to be uh, held from? When you talk about the East African community, I'm a practical business person, but also take off some time to move around to see how these things move. As I came to this room, some traders were calling me, and I have to apprehend signatures on a memorandum of understanding based on which they are paying URA taxes for the rice that they are importing from Tanzania, grown in Tanzania, produced in Tanzania, supposed to carry an import duty of zero, and they are making agreement that and depositing security checks of 75% because Tanzania misbehaved last year, imported.